He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. How can we lie during the week and then say, oh, I serve the Lord and I love him so much and continue to break his commandments? How can we covet our neighbor's things? Oh, man, I want, I want that thing. I want that thing they have. Or, or we go to work and we, we take pens from work. Or, or if we work at a hotel, we take washcloths. Or, it, you know, we, we take paper from work. Or we take home, we got a stack full of rubber bands that we've been taking from work. I know, I know you may think, oh, but that's just little small things. But those things matter. It is a heart. See, it ain't about how big the item is that you're taking. It ain't about how significant, if somebody's going to miss it or not. It doesn't matter if anybody will recognize that that thing is gone. It matters about you. You know it doesn't belong to you, and yet you still leave every day with it. You take these things with you. You have them in your pocket, and you think, oh, I, I just forgot to take it out. But you know. And you know what happens? We think about it. We say, oh, I don't need to do this. I know I don't need to hang out with that person. I don't need to be at this place. I don't need to be doing what they're doing. I don't need to be uh, getting drunk. I, I, or even what we call a buzz. Oh, why? Why well, I don't get drunk. I just get a buzz. Oh, my goodness. What has happened to us? We have been polluted by religious doctrine. We are trying to uh, fit in with uh, these, these cultural norms of religion instead of the cultural norms of heaven, of the kingdom of heaven. Let's get into this a little bit. Sometimes we'll, uh, I'll hear people say, oh, I love the Lord. Praise God. He's, he's wonderful. But then we start talking about this kind of stuff, about obedience, about serving him. Oh, I got to, you know, about, I want to always please the Lord, about seeking his face and, and praying when we're at home and worshiping. Do you come home? And do you lay, ever lay down? Do you ever take time aside and just say, I'm not going to turn the TV on. I'm just going to lay here on the floor and just worship God and, and pray to Him and, and just tell Him how much I love Him. Or is that just for church? Is that just for when you're in a sanctuary? Or is that just for when you're around certain people? See, that's the, what God sees. God sees us all of the time. He watches us all of the time. God ain't, but he ain't sitting there saying, oh, oh no, you, you lied. Oh, you committed adultery. Oh, you, you looked upon them and, uh, you know, you lusted. Oh, he's not sitting there waiting for you to do these things so he can mark you off. He is waiting for you to be obedient so that he can bless you. And when you do these things, when you break his commandments, and remember, the Bible says if you break even the least of these, you have broken every single one of them. That means murder. <laughs> if you break even the least of these, you have broken every one of them. So don't try to justify by some type of sin level. There's no sin level or grade of sin. Sin is sin. Sin is rebellion against God. And you rebel against God when you do things that he has told you not to do. And we do it all the time. And we justify it. How do we justify it? Well, we use a scripture. We love to bring the Lord in. We love to use a scripture when it fits us, when it fits our life and our lifestyle makes us feel like, oh, yeah, I'm going to use this scripture. But the problem is we hear those few scriptures, but we don't read the rest of the Bible. There are many people that have been serving the Lord for multiple years and they have never read the entire Bible not even once. We use this scripture and we say, oh, well, you know, everybody comes short of the glory of God. Everybody does. And we take that scripture and we say, well, you're supposed to be obedient. You're supposed to be obeying God. And we say, oh, that was the law. I'm not under law. I'm under grace. Have you ever heard someone say that before? Have you ever heard your preacher say that? 
We, all of us have come short of the glory of God. Only, only Jesus was able to be perfect. And so we are no longer under law, we're under grace. I want to explain this to you because it is so important for you to understand this. Please, people, I pray that you will listen to this message. And I pray not that any word would fall from my mouth that is not of the Holy Ghost, that is not of God, that is not of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, God wants you to hear this message. You are listening to this message because God has, is dealing with you. He is not wanting to send you to hell. He's not wanting to just to, oh, I'm just wanting to keep tabs on them because I don't want to bless them. He is wanting to bless you. He wants to prosper you even as your soul prospers. He is dying. He is just waiting. But we have put up a shield in front of us, a shield of disobedience. See, God, he cannot go against his own word. If he says, if you regard iniquity in your heart, I will not hear your prayers. It's not that he's saying, oh, you've sinned. I'm not going to hear you. He has spoken that because he is holy. And no matter how bad God wants to listen to you, when you're sinning and living in sin, he can't listen to you and hear you because he, if he did, if he was attentive unto your prayers, if he listened to your prayers and answered your prayers, even when you're in sin, even when you're in the state of rebellion, he would violate his own word and that would make God a liar. And God is not a liar. So I am delivering this to you by the unction of the Holy Spirit because you need to hear this. You need to, God is wanting to pour out blessings into your life. He is wanting to impact you with the kingdom of heaven. He was wanting to impact your life. He is wanting to impact your your finances. He is wanting to impact your health. He is wanting to impact every area of your life. But he needs you. In the Bible, he always says, if you do this, I will do this. If you do this, I will do that. God is waiting for the if. He is wanting you to return to obedience to him, to obey him. Let me explain to you what we have done. We have, we have created something that I refer to, personally, I refer to it as a, as a sin allowance. We say, let me give you an example. My son, if we're ever out playing somewhere, for instance, in our yard, and I say, Tyler, do not go past this point in our yard. Do not go, do not go past this point. Don't, don't go to this, you know, you can't go past that. Now, he'll have this whole area to play with. Huge front yard to play in. And I'll say, just don't go past the mailbox. Just don't go past this line. Do you know what he does? He will walk all the way to that line, and he'll stand there at that line. He... I don't know why he does that. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm working on the, the, uh, the rebelliousness of him. But he'll wait right there, just get at the edge of that line and want to put his foot over, want to, want to see how close he can walk to that line instead of enjoying all of that area. And so what we have done when we say, I'm no longer under, under law, I'm under grace, which that is in the Bible, but see, we don't understand what God means by law. And we don't understand what grace is. 